before I jump into the new stuff, with a little bit of a recap of the current Windows Phone 7 product that you all can and should go out and buy and try today. Now, as you heard from Steve, our customers are really happy once they get in and use it. And as folks who are part of the industry, I really strongly encourage you to try that yourself. And what I'm going to do is start out. I have current Windows Phone 7 here. I want to give you a walkthrough in real life of some of the smart designs and hub features that Steve talked about. So I first want you to imagine a real world scenario. Um, at home, I have three year old twin daughters. They are constantly in motion. They're pretty cute. And if I want to take their photo, as Steve described, imagine I'm reaching into my pocket and I'm pulling out my phone. I press the camera button on the phone and voila, the camera wakes up. There's all of you. Let's smile down there in the front row. Boom, I'm taking a picture. Pretty quick and easy. One button push right at my pocket to take a picture. And like Steve said, even if your phone has a lock, it's that easy. Now, smart design goes beyond just taking the photo. As you notice, when I took the picture, it slid to the left, which means I can go over here and pull it back in from the left, and now there's quick and easy things I can do with the picture. I can pull up my menu here and with one touch, upload that picture to Facebook. We have deep integration of Facebook, Windows Live, lots of other third-party services throughout these experiences. That's part of the promise of smart design and the promise of hope. Uh, that's just one quick example. Uh, if I come back to our, our home screen, many of you have seen this before, we call these live tiles. And the idea is that whenever a user touches their start button to go to their home screen or start screen, they get quick and instant information that's relevant to whatever task they're going to care about. For example, as I scroll down here, the calendar tile there is large enough to show me what my next appointment is and where it is so I don't have to dig my way through into a calendar application. As another example, you see there up top left, that's a tile of my wife, Christina. I call her a lot. I text her a lot. So I can put her right on my start menu, so she's always just one click away. You might notice there, that tile is animated. She updated her Facebook profile earlier today with a comment about our kids being sick and now they're getting better. I'm glad to hear that's happening while I'm gone. Uh, but the point is, I can just press my start and I get glance and go information about what's happening with the people I care about through the integration of these third-party apps and services. My game hub shows my Xbox Live avatar peeking in. The pictures hub shows a photo of my daughters, and down here at the bottom of the start experience, you see a third party application, the Weather Channel, using live tiles to give me glance and go information about the weather without needing to go into the separate application. That's an example of making the system smart and simple. Now, another good example which Steve referenced, and I want to give you a demo in real life, is how we've tried to focus on search and using Bing to help people make better decisions. Because you have a mobile phone, there's a lot we know about your location and about the kinds of tasks you're likely to want to do. So as Steve said, maybe I'm here in Barcelona and I have a little bit of a longing for my hometown Seattle coffee. And we'll see if our connectivity is still working. We've had some connectivity problems. But let me try the scenario he said. I'm going to press the little microphone. Starbucks coffee. Simply speak my query. The audio is packaged up and sent to the cloud to be recognized. You see there, our cloud service actually did recognize it, although we seem to not have a connection to our service right now for seeing results. So, as is the risk, usually with this many people in an auditorium and crowded bandwidth, sometimes we don't get connectivity. So I'm going to leave it at that, and I will again encourage all of you to go get a Windows Phone 7 and try these scenarios out for yourself. They're even better when they pay off in your real life. Uh, Moving on from the topic of smart design, let me give you a quick look at some of the hubs that Steve talked about. Uh, first one, as a matter of example, the people hub. When I go into the people hub, you can see that it pulls together all the people that I care about, from Facebook, from Windows Live, from Exchange, from Yahoo, from Gmail. The people I'm communicating with most recently are shown right here, so it's like an automatic speed dial. If I pan over, I get a list of everyone. You can see, because we automatically link people to each other coming from different services, almost everyone gets a photo. And if I want to update my own Facebook or Windows Live profile, I can just do it right there. And last, if I pan over, the What's New feed shows me what's happening with all the people I care about all in one simple, quick place. So I can pan down and see all kinds of social network activity from those people. As another example, which Steve mentioned, I'm going to scroll down and show you the Pictures Hub. When I come into the Pictures Hub, you can see I can jump right into my pictures library there. 
I can pan over and see pictures I've taken recently or favored it, or I can pan over and see all of the photo activity of my friends on their social networks. It's a great way to stay in touch with what people are doing when they post pictures. Again, I encourage you all, try this yourself and see how efficient it makes you and how nice the experience feels generally. So, having shown you this, this is current Windows Phone 7, I now want to move on and I'm going to move to the part of the demo where I'm going to show unfinished code. So I'm going to switch out this phone here and plug in a phone running an early build of the update that we'll be making available later this year to all Windows Phone 7 users. Um, so I switched over here and I'm going to move on to another hub which Steve talked about, the Office Hub. I see I lost my projection there so I'm going to unplug and replug again. See if it comes back. There we go. Now, I'm going to open up the Office Hub and I want to show you the real code example of how the Office Hub now goes beyond what we do in Windows Phone 7 where we give people access to their OneNote notes and their Word, Excel, and PowerPoint documents. We let corporate customers connect to SharePoint. But now, we're going to let consumers and small business users get to their documents on SkyDrive. Since Office 2010 shifts, there's over 30 million, sorry, there's over 70 million people who are using SkyDrive to do Word, Excel, and PowerPoint with the free Office web companion. And once we make this update available, all those people and more will be able to do those same great tasks on their phones. Lost my projection again. We have a long cable here. Let's plug that back in. Okay, so here is the notes area of the hub. If I pan over the documents area of the hub, and right here is locations where at the bottom you see SharePoint servers that I might be doing corporate collaboration on. And access to my phone, and here, SkyDrive. I can touch SkyDrive, and because I've already locked, signed in one time with my Windows Live ID, I don't need to do it again. I don't need to install extra apps. There's no fuss, no hassle. I can jump right into my SkyDrive. At the top is my own documents directory where I might have been using the free Office Web Companions on my PC to create, say, documents. And when I jump in here, it's super easy for me to open them, edit them using those Word, Excel, PowerPoint applications on the phone. If I pop back up a level, one of the other really interesting things about SkyDrive is shown by the second item in the list. You see there is an item called Project X File, and it's small type shared by Augusto Valdez. Now, this is a great feature. With SkyDrive, one person can mark particular parts of their cloud storage as public or share with other people. In this case, Augusto might be a person that I'm going to collaborate with on a project. He shared this folder with me, and it automatically shows up on my phone under my SkyDrive, so I know these files are available for me to do collaboration with him. It's instant and easy, no app phones download, no extra signing. When I open the folder, I go right here, find all these documents, open them up, comment on them, edit it, all the great support that you get in the built-in office applications that are part of Windows Phone. So, that is a quick real-world example of the Office Hub and our new SkyDrive support. Now I want to transition and talk about IE9. Steve mentioned earlier, announced that we will have support for Internet Explorer 9 on Windows Phone in our update release later this year. And I want to give you a look at that code. But before I show you IE9 running on the phone, I want to give you some, some information about IE9 on the PC. Uh, as Steve mentioned, IE9 is doing lots of releases on the web for people to download and try out. They had their release candidate earlier this week. There are two very significant things about i9 that make it a big step forward for us. One is it has fantastic standard support. It supports HTML5 and lots of HTML5 richness. Canvas, SVG, it has great CSS support. And secondly, it does that standard support in a way that takes great advantage of powerful graphic hardware. So far you've seen that on the PC, and what you're about to see is that same hardware acceleration taking place on the phone. Now, I want to give you an example of just how significant that graphics hardware acceleration is by showing you a video of IE9 running on the PC with some side-by-side -side comparisons of other modern web browsers. So let's start the video and take a look at IE9 on the PC. So the first thing you see here is our IE, our fish IE page, where you see the fish web page being shown in IE versus Firefox. Now, a bunch of these other examples are web pages that use hardware acceleration to really give an incredibly smooth end user experience. I'm going 
going to get ready with the next demo here while this video plays out. Okay, so, so that's a quick look at IE9 and how hardware acceleration really takes advantage of the full capabilities of the PC to make, make web pages look great. And what we've just switched to here is IE9 running on Windows Phone. Now, there's a really important point here, which is that the core browsing engine of IE9 that ships on PCs is the same core browsing engine that will ship on phones. And that's great news for consumers, because it means they'll get a great smooth experience like you see on Fish IE here. It's also great news for developers, because it means when website developers create a site, if it works well on the PC, it'll work well on Windows Phone as well. And I want to give you a little bit of a comparative example. This is the Fish IE page. Same page you saw in the video on the desktop, except modified for a phone screen. Other than that, same idea. This is running 50 Fish. And I want to show you how much this hardware acceleration really matters. I'm going to pull this down and by way of comparison. I've got an iPhone 4 here running the current build of Safari. And the Safari web browser is not taking advantage of hardware acceleration, so you really get a sense for how dramatic the difference is when we use the full power capability of the device. You saw it on the PC, you've tried it yourself if you've downloaded i9, and now you can see the difference on the phone. So that is the first real world example of the performance difference. Now I'm going to uh, use i9 here and navigate over to another site and just give you another example of what you saw in the video. Um, one of the sites that was shown in the video, and all those sites you can try yourself if you download IE. All those sites in the video are part of the um, IE9 test drive site. And one of the ones you saw was IMDB. So this is a mock-up of an HTML5 IMDB site that uses animations and rich user experience. And I want to show you how it looks and feels very smooth, just like what you saw on the desktop. I can touch these movies and navigate around. I can push the play button. And because the hardware acceleration makes this experience so smooth, the user, although they just visited a website, it's almost indistinguishable from the experience you would get running a client app on the device. Um, now, similarly, one of the other things that's cool about this, let me move my way around the carousel again here, um, is that the HTML5 standard supports a wide range of things, but one of the more valuable and important ones it supports is native support for video. Lots of websites today use Flash or other plugins to implement video on websites. And in our case, we don't support many of those sites. But with IE9 and its standards-based support for the video tag, sites like this IMDB site enable native support for video just using HTML. So in this case, I'm going to touch the item for Despicable Me. We're going to hit the web service here, the website, start downloading this video and playing it. You'll see, just a second, because we still have our connectivity, you'll see uh, streaming H.264 video in high definition. And maybe we don't have enough connectivity for you to actually see this. But trust me, we typically would show streaming high definition H.264 video. I'm going to actually go back and try that one more time if you could get lucky on the second try. Yeah, we're not going to get lucky on the second try. Well, unfortunately, that didn't work. As I said, this is preliminary, not final code. We'll get all these things worked out before we ship it and make it available to users. But now what I want to do is switch over and give you one more demo example of the software that's going to be coming in this free update later this year. And that is walk you through a multitasking scenario. As Steve said, later on this year, in 2011, we'll make this update available for all Windows Phone 7 users who will then get added support for multitasking of third-party apps. Today, Windows Phone 7 multitasks our own first-party code, but generally we don't multitask third-party apps because we want to make sure the user has a very predictable long life in their battery. When apps run in the background, if you're not careful about how you architect it, they can often spin and use the CPU and other resources for the battery drain. What we're going to shift is a multitasking approach that we think does the right balance of protecting the user's battery while letting multitasking happen. So I'm going to start up this demo by running an app. Um, the app that I'm going to run is called Rise Glory. It's an Xbox Live game. It's now available on the marketplace. If you have a Windows phone, you can try this yourself. It's pretty fun. This is a World War I uh, fighter plane simulation. And once the game launches, I'm going to play the part of the Red Baron 